Hello, my name is Frank Kruger, and today I'd like to show you Live Code. This is a live coding environment that I've created pretty much for Xamarin iOS, but I wrote it in a way that it should be able to work on other platforms in the future. But I'm an iOS developer, so that's where we're going to start. Installing it's pretty easy. Uh, you just have to install the Xamarin Inspector first. That's because I require a version of mono.csharp that works. And the second step is to install a Xamarin Studio add-in called just the live code. There's a direct link here, or you can point to an add-in repository that I put up. I'm trying to get it on the standard repository, but that server doesn't really respond that often. So anyway, that's it. I've already followed these steps. We've installed it. So now I can come over and create a new project just as normal. I'm going to this works pretty well with existing code too, but I'm going to start from scratch and just call it a live code example. None of these really matter. I'm not going to bother with any version control because it's just a demo. Good. So we get Xamarin Studio. Should have built us a little template app here. I'm just going to compile and run it to make sure everything is behaving itself. Clear simulator, just head to run. And there we go, that's just a boring white app. Now there is one step per app to do to install live code, and that is you simply have to add the live code Nuget. This Nuget only supports Xamarin iOS at the moment. There's no pickles or anything like that in it. That Nuget installs a. No, once it does, come on. It installs the live code assembly, which is just a tiny little HTTP server, and of course, JSON.NET, because every library needs JSON.NET. The one thing that you have to do is start up the web server. And that's as easy as creating a new one and calling run. And that's it. That's all the code that you need to add to your app to enable uh, live code. Now, you probably want to do something like this so that you don't accidentally uh, release it. So what does that enable us? Well, let's restart the app. Wait a minute. Do, 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 do. Waiting, waiting, waiting. And nothing. It's just our standard app as it was before. But a new ability that we've gained is the ability to select some code, go to tools, and say visualize selection. If I execute that, Whatever I have selected here, this text, the word true, is sent over to the phone to be evaluated. It's evaluated and the value true is shown. To make my point, we can actually put some math here and send that over instead. We can put a string over there and that gets sent. By default, everything just gets printed uh, running to string on it. But there's a few smarts built into it. Uh, for example, if we pass it a view, it knows to render that view instead. So here's a stupid little slider. We really make the point. We can even do full table view. I'm just hitting uh, the command uh, control shift return to visualize the selected text. So in this mode, live code is acting like an old fashioned uh, REPL, read eval print loop. We can just keep sending it little bits of uh, code to execute and then visualize. But that's not at all realistic to how you really want to write an app. The way we want to write an app is, well, we write the stupid app. So I'm going to get away from using uh, zips for the minute for my UI and construct my UI uh, in code instead, if I can remember how. And that, of course, requires that we set a uh, view controller. Oops. And 
I'm going to write a little object inspector. It's just going to show the properties of any object that's passed to it. And I'll give it a better name so that it's more clear. So I've set the root view controller for the window. And lastly, what do we have to do? We have to make it view and visible. Good. We do that. We edit our info plist. Get rid of these evil interface table files. And then we generate a class. <clears throat> And there we go, start. And of course, I want this to be a UI view controller. All right, that's all pretty much standard how we go about starting to write apps. I'm just gonna re-execute it to make sure I didn't screw anything up. We should get a black screen because it's an empty view controller. So wait for the compile, wait for the execute. And there we are. So I mentioned before, that we can send arbitrary code over to the live environment. And so I just sent the number four. But the actual useful feature here is not sending code over, but whole classes at a time. So I'm going to call visualize class. This is going to check where my cursor is, find what class I'm currently editing, and send that code over and new it up. What does that mean? Well, let me just call it and you'll see. I am working within the object inspector controller, so that's what we see on the screen over there. I can start doing some fun things with it, like that. And we can see that I just typed the word Frank, and Frank showed up over there. I didn't have to save the file, I didn't have to rebuild, I didn't have to re-execute, none of that. I can just write normal code. So that's Hello World. Um, let's make an improvement here. I actually want this to be a table view controller. Good, good. And let's have a little more fun. Let's uh, actually give it the ability to work. <laughs> actually display some cells. And pardon me as I write some ugly code here for a minute. This is all just boilerplate uh, table view code. And I'm gonna do one little addition of printing out the row number that it's on. Do, 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 do. Good. <clears throat> There's that. But we need to override one more thing. Rows in section. And we're gonna make it 100. So there. No recompiling, nothing. I just rebuilt the, I just kept working on the code and the app kept updating the class that we see here. So I now have 100 rows, 100 very boring rows. The next step here is I wanna actually add some functionality. What I'm gonna do is for every public property on the passed in object, which I'll just call the target, um, I want to display some stuff. I'm going to use the section to do that, of course. And add a little bit of code to fetch the object, to fetch those properties. Let's see, how do we do this nowadays? Let's get type info properties. Yes. Good enough. Oops, all that. And if there are no properties, or if we have passed a bad object here, okay. <clears throat> Now there's one limitation with the live coding environment, and that's that I need default constructors. So let's just pass it a test object in its default constructor. Oops, I'm doing this wrong. Getting ahead of myself. I just want to call the other constructor passing an object. 
So there, we can see that the code is working again. We're doing pretty good. Instead of returning 100, I'm going to return properties.length. So now we can see there's actually just two properties here. Now what else can we do? Let's, um, let's actually get the right data. And now we can say something a little more useful, like name. And there. We can now see that we have uh, two properties listed, cars and length. I didn't even know there was a cars property on string. That's interesting. Fun, fun, fun. Uh, let's go one more level here. We can put a better title on here, and I'm running it kind of funny, just so I can handle the null case without having to think. Good, so that's the object, and we can try some other things, like putting a different object to pass to it. <clears throat> I want to have a little bit more fun here. I want to actually show the value of the property, so let's put that on the detail text label. Um, and I just remembered I have to really put this in the try catch because, you know, randomly calling properties on random objects isn't the safest thing in the world. Let's start with this. Oop, and we actually managed to crash the app. Every so often you can put just the right amount of code in there uh, to cause a crash. And in this case, I don't know if I can find it, we crashed because it's uh, a null pointer reference, but more importantly, um, it's because of this detailed text label that I haven't quite set yet. So what I didn't manage to do was get that inside the try block in time. So that'll happen to you from time to time when running live code, uh, just because just because .NET was never designed for this, and we have to be a little patient with it. So let's get this up and running again, and there we go. And I'm going to make sure that the IDE is uh, tracking our one class. Good. It's a very good beginning. And now, uh, lastly, what we can do, I can get rid of these messages now. They're not very interesting or important, is actually compute that value string. Uh, this should be easy. Yeah, get value for the object, which is target, which I never saved. Let's remember our target. And lastly, that. Good. And then, really lastly, switch this to a different value display. Great. So now that we see there is the string hello world, and it has a length of 11. That's interesting, but let's think of some better objects to look at. Specifically, let's look at something complicated, a new UI view. So you can see that without recompiling, without doing anything, I immediately got to see how my UI reacts to a whole different object. So these are all the public properties on UI view. It's not the prettiest layout ever, so let's do a little bit of refinement here. And this is the most fun part of live code, is actually getting to play with the UI. You're no longer stuck in a slow designer or stuck uh, slowly rebuilding and rerunning all your code. You can just start editing things. So instead of a value one, let's switch it to a subtitle. Good, that's a start, but there's too much emphasis on the text label. So I'm going to do a couple things. First is I'm going to back down that color. And maybe some. Okay, that's good. <clears throat> so that turned it into a, a lighter gray. Now I also want to make sure 
that this is as strong as I can make it. So I'm going to do, I want something like a dark red. So I'm going to do a new UI color. Is that good? No. What do we need? Alpha? Yeah, alpha. Alpha to the rescue. <clears throat> okay, so we got some cool red text. Let's uh, bump up that font a little bit. Detail text variable dot font. And we might just do a bold system font size bigger. Ah, excellent. So I have my bigger font. Now I'm actually not really digging that red anymore. So let's put it back to black for just a minute. I'm kind of a simple person. I notice our cells aren't quite big enough anymore. So let's override the uh, table views default height. And a good place to do that is right after your view has loaded, because then we have access to the table view. And we can set a row height of whatever, 100. Oops, that's a little bit too much. 50, a little too less. 70. Oh, it'll do for now. So now we have a much better laid out property inspector. And I was able to write this whole thing with only one uh, compile and rerun due to the uh, accidental exception that I threw on the UI thread. But otherwise, I can keep cranking through and keep changing features of this class and watch it reflected in the app. Now the important thing to note here is I always had IntelliSense while I was doing this because we were in the proper editor here, which has full access to all the IntelliSense and wonders. Also, it's important to note that I'm working in a real file here with real usings in a real namespace. It's actually in my project directory. And when I'm ready and I can just restart the app, Now we'll sit through the build and the compile and the running and the waiting. We can see that slowly it is indeed running the exact same thing that I told it that I was working with before. And so that's it for this first demo. That's the live code. Uh, it has two features where you can send code over to the iPhone and it'll visualize it for you. And it also has the feature that it can track classes that you're working on so that as you type, it updates uh, and executes that code. No more waiting. Thank you very much for your time.